Clarky, I yep. read a fantastic feature with Brad oh, Scott on the weekend from you. Yep. And so I just went down and I said, OK, where's he going to say when we're playing finals? And instead he <laughs> said... <laughs> Words to this effect, we've got an eight-year plan. Yes. Explain, please. Lots of uh, Essendon <laughs> fans, I think, coughed up their Wheaties when they read the story <laughs> in the Sunday Herald Sun on Sunday. Look, it's more of a window <laughs> than window. a plan, uh, John. Yeah. So I think, look, I'm not too bullish. I know Matthew Lloyd said that Essendon fans should burn down Whitty yep. Hill if they don't make finals because it has been 20 years, right? Essendon fans are sick of it, missing it. But it's not Brad Scold or the current crew's fault that they've been garbage for two decades, right? So, and I look at their team, Sam, and I see Zach Reid. Like, they've been poor defensively for two decades, Essendon, or certainly the last ten years, aside from the James Hoodie or maybe. They've got Zach Reid's played eight games. He's going to start ten out back. They've got some, you know, depth and fringe. They, got, they, don't, they don't lay pressure forward. They're still bottom four for points against. There's no magic beans. They're just going to sprout up into the top four. So can you tell me how a club recruits Todd Goldstein in his 30s, yep. Jay Gresham, Ben Mackay and Zane Dersma? Uh, Xavier Dersma, um, and, th and then tells us, well, well, it might be another eight years until, uh, until we're uh, in premiership mode. I, I think it's an eight-year window, so they can still be very good <laughs> in two or three years, and then there's going to be that four or five years where they can have a crack at it. So Zach Merritt could be the Scotty Pendleby like last year. He could win the premiership probably towards the back end of his prime. But you mentioned those recruits, Sam. Yep. How many of those finished top five in their best and fairest in their club. Jay Gresham didn't. Ben Mackay didn't, right? So I don't think we go and say these guys are superstars. So why'd they spend two million bucks at Caps? But if they're eight years away, why, why, why go down that strategy? I'm just confused. And I they're think not eight years away. They're so, a couple okay. of years away that it could, it could stretch. But, but is he conditioning the fans to say, yes. we're not going to be that good this year? Now, this is what Chris Scott said today, so. uh, this but week. Want... I feel that if things go well for us, we're going to be as good a chance as anyone. Why is Brad Scott always conditioning Luke the Beveridge fans? Luke Beveridge said the same. He said, we can be the best team in it to Glen McFarland in an interview. So I don't exactly understand merits, yeah. why a football club would tell their supporters before a season, you know what, maybe prepare for some pain. Uh, They've been through 21 years of pain. I think there's a massive disconnect between a massive supporter base and the football department. I think that the Essendon fans are the fans who most need the communication because they are the ones who are emotional. They are the ones who are frustrated and impatient. So they need so to know really realistically where they're at because if you've seen that their first seven, um, I'm not sure if we've, we've put it up already, but their first seven matches are really tough. The Bombers could be one and six. They beat all four. six. Eric, have a look at this now, John. Tell they're me in the how top many... five with four matches to go last so, year. Win. Win. But they beat us then. Oh, sorry, beat Hawthorne. And then Sydney yeah. at the SCG. So they travel the SCG. St Kilda, I think, will be good. Then they go to Adelaide for Port. Bulldogs, I think, will be tough. Back to Adelaide, not winning that. Then Collingwood on Anzac Day. They could be one and six. And you're telling me they want to finish top they four. They might have sacked Brad Scott if they're one and six. <laughs> hey, what I would say, Stability. though. Stability. Uh, look, I just think if I'm Zach Merritt, I'm thinking, I, I know what he's saying. If I'm some of those players, I'm saying... Eight years. This is a cop-out. This is a fan base that wants and expects success. Mason. They understand some of the weaknesses. OK, Zach, Merritt's, uh, Zach yep. um, Reed has played eight games. But they need to be talked up yep. this list, not talked down. You know what the biggest indicator is? They're giving them an air. Darcy Parrish re-signed. Mason Redmond re-signed. So they have voted with their signatures. But you're right, my phone did blow up with this man <laughs> telling me... Uh, they they re-signed to win flags. Not, <laughs> not for having an eight-year plan. Luke Beveridge, is he about to drop another selection bombshell on the eve of round one? So Jack McRae was dropped from the leadership group over summer. And I, I can tell you this now, he won't play on Sunday. So Out. he's played two full VFL games. My read is that he's ready to go. He's a three-time All-Australian. He won't be there. Caleb Daniel, massive question mark over him too. He's been a, a question mark all pre-season. Only played a half against... Hawthorne and there is a section of the locker room down at Witten Oval mm. that has a belief that players that Luke Beveridge goes and recruits get to get they get a golden ticket at the start of their careers at the kennel. The newbies. <laughs> golden and, ticket. And there is a little bit of a precedent here. So Jackson Trango yep. played 38 <laughs> games in, in his first two years. Rory Lobb in different form last year played 20 games. Um, Robbie McComb, Billy Gowers, they got great runs off the bat. Th this year on Sunday, Nick Caulfield, James Harms and Lockie Bramble, they're all certain to play and we might see McRae and potentially even Caleb Daniel running around into the VFL. Big shock, Ralph. Yeah, if I've played two games, I'm a triple All-Australian, uh, two games back off a minor hamstring injury. My coach is already effectively saying, as um, Luke Beveridge did today, well, we're not going to play him. You know, 
Clayton Oliver, five weeks of a pre-season, all of a sudden he's straight starring. in. So there are so many players of that calibre who would say, no, no, I deserve to play in this side. And I, I could be understand why he's so disgruntled. Oh, but I, I should clarify, I, I don't mind it from Luke Beveridge. Like, if he's gone out of his way to make a pitch to players that I want you at my football club, I will back you in. I, I, I think it's absolutely fair enough that he gives him a go straight off the bat. But there are certainly players at that club that have noted that um, the newbies have gone straight past him. So what's the Caleb Daniel story? So why is it that he can't find... A, I can understand with McRae, you know, he's an inside midfielder and others have come past him. But, you know, Caleb Daniel, he can play forward, he can play back. He plays centre-half back at times. Oh. In his, you know. <laughs> I'll do this show in um, half note. If, he, if, he, if Caleb Daniel is not in the team, surely Caleb Daniel is in the team. He is an absolute superstar. Yeah, there's a chance he does hang on. I think the sub might be an option for him on Sunday. Mm. But we saw he's on the fringe. I mean, he did not play in the first half in the dress rehearsal again. Yeah. Hawthorne. So it is not a stretch to say that Lockie Bramble's gone ahead of him and Nick Caulfield. Bevo spins the magnets. He does some funky teams, hey, uh, funky things at selection. What do you think, Ralphie, about Tim English? So we were questions about the locker rooms. Is, is it a happy football club? Have they got the zen? What about Tim English out of contract? Bailey Smith we mentioned before and Jamara Uglagan, the big ruckman. Does he stay or go? Tim's happy there. Tim's loyal. His uh, partner has come back from playing uh, um, Nepal in um, West WA. Um, he's got a house here. He wants to win pr premierships. Now, it's going to be a significant deal, but I think by round 10, things will have gone in the right direction, and I think he'll re-sign with his football club. Now, I think the seventh placing in last year's Best and Fairest was something that raised some eyebrows. Do they rate me or not? But I think the list management team headed by Sam Power have made really clear that they want him. Now, I think that deal would need to be something like six or seven years at about a million bucks. But that's million, the going... Ralphie, a million bucks for Ruckman these yep. days. We know the Brody Grundy. Brody that's, Grundy. That's, that's a lot of money. People, the clubs are paying less for Ruckman. That's a big investment. Yeah, it is. But he's going to get a million somewhere, so he might as well get it at the Western Bulldogs. Like, there's going to be 60 players who are on a million bucks by next year. That's just what the market forces tell you. Now, he's already on on, say, $800,000. I know a lot of people have potted him. He kicked 16 goals last year. He's the best ruckman in the comp. He's a follow-up ruckman, ruckman who also wins possessions. He has impact. He's not just a behind the play, you know, skirting around trying to get loose kicks type of ruckman. If, if I had one prediction, it would be that Jamara Uglehagen will re-sign first. And I wouldn't discount Tim English leaving, but not for West Coast. I think there's a potentially a Victorian suitor that, that could put their hand up that, and, and really appeal to him. That, is, that will be interesting. Uh, Ralph, you've got to ask about Riley Sanders. The selection squeeze, he's causing some of these issues. Looks like a special talent, young Riley Sanders. Luke Beveridge officially has a man crush on Riley <laughs> Sanders, the North uh, Launceston product. Here's uh, Bevo today. And he's by, you know, in, significant, in a significant way, um, you know, well ahead of, of any first-year players that, that I've ever seen come through our football club. Uh, as I said, using that word diligence, he's extremely diligent. So he pushes McRae even further out of the midfield. If I'm McRae, I'm thinking, what about uh, what happened with Taylor Adams? Pushed to half forward, all of a sudden goes and finds himself a new four-year deal at Sydney. I'd be thinking, I might just try the Taylor uh, Adams Avenue. Now, just quickly on Sanders, three-year deal, locked into the end of 2026. He's a Tassie boy. So why wouldn't he add one more year to his deal gets to the end of 2027. Oh, and it's oh no. It's almost like... Don't I don't know. Serious, he's not leaving. He's not leaving. <laughs> but this is no. almost double free agency. So yeah. his manager gets him there and then Tassie goes hard he, and he says, you're just going to have to give me a couple of hundred thousand extra was, on my deal. He was boarding at Melbourne Grammar last year. He he's not leaving. Game, he's just he's getting staying. the maximum dollars. That, and, and, <laughs> and then he gets free agency again in four years, mate. Ralphie. He could be like Kirk Cousins, the right. NFL player. We, we Lots love, of cash. We love this. Tasmania recruiting team got their um, list of targets. Where does Riley Sanders fit on that? Do you think? Uh, he's number one. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be an absolute superstar in the mo in, at 23 years of age with 10 more years left to come.